All right, I'm gonna do my best to show you a review on this carbide toothed resocking blade. I've only been using it for a few hours. I've gone through quite a few other blades, as you can see up here, in the last couple of weeks. And to excuse the mess, this is a active garage workshop. I try to use every last square inch I can. This is the inch and a quarter, 150 inch long resocking blade by Laguna. You can see a cut over here. It gives you a pretty smooth finish. You're still gonna see some minor imperfections and saw lines. They claim you can get a glueable joint out of this, and I'd say for some applications you could. It's not gonna be as smooth as a, as a jointer finish, but you'll get something about half decent um, if you're gluing small projects, I'd say. Okay, try to get you all a good view here without chopping up my cell phone stand. I'm cutting through a piece of very hard wood this is dogwood that I recently harvested off of a um, little project here in town. I've been trying to get a hold of this piece of wood and the much larger piece of this wood laying right down here. I don't know if you can really see how big it is from the picture. You're looking at about a um, about a 10 or 10 or 12 inch diameter piece of dogwood. And if you know anything about dogwood at all, you know that it rarely gets that big and usually doesn't get bigger than about four or five inches in diameter at the age of 50 or 60 years old. So this is a very old piece of wood, quite large in diameter. And truth be told, this 12 inch piece here is tiny compared to the piece that it came off of. So there's about a 16 inch diameter piece that was at the uh, trunk of the tree before the, the branches all split out from it. So we're gonna try to get a couple of cutting boards out of the larger piece. This wood is, is really awful to work with. It's it's real hard. It doesn't dull your blades too awful bad, but you've got to cut so slowly that you're getting quite quite a few teeth per inch through the through the board as you progress through it. You're getting thousands and thousands of cuts per inch versus maybe a uh, hundred cuts per inch on a blade. So you have to move pretty slowly through it. But I've been pretty impressed with this blade. I've uh, like I said, I've burned through quite a few of these other blades up on the the ceiling even. Pretty good, I believe it's pronounced Sturette blades. We've gone through a dozen or so of those. I'll link those um, in the description below. We get them on Amazon. They ship in in two days and they really are a good blade and they give you a pretty good finish. They're just a, a hardened steel or a tempered steel blade, uh, leading edge tooth blade. So they will eventually wear out on you, but they're not terribly expensive and we've, uh, we've really liked them, but we thought we'd upgrade to a to a slightly more expensive blade. These Laguna blades, I will say they're probably worth it, but I'll go ahead and stop talking. I'm not gonna run my dust collection because it's too loud in the background, but I'll go ahead and get the saw fired up here and see if I can make a pass or two for you. Here we go. And right now I'm just cleaning up the edges of the board, trying to get it kind of squared up so I can make a few blanks out of it. We're cutting with a 150 inch blade here on my Jet 20 inch bandsaw. I think my camera is about to hit the saw. There we go. Yeah, I cut up a little worm in there. I feel bad about that. But you can see it's a, it's a relatively smooth finish on here that you get. And you could glue this on a on a small application. I'm gonna go ahead and make another pass. Take a little bit more off. And if you all have any suggestions for what to do with some of this wormy wood that comes off the outside, I'm open to suggestions. This is real good hard wood. It's certainly one of the hardest woods you can get in the US. It's not quite as hard as Osage Orange, but it's pretty close in there. It's a whole lot prettier, I think, to work with. I do have quite a bit of Osage I work with, the yellow wood down here. And that wood, that will definitely dull your blades. 
I've, I've made quite a few passes with other blades. I'm not quite ready to pass any bo Bodark Osage Orange through this blade yet. Because I'm still pretty proud of this blade. So let's see here. Let's see if we can cut a few more, a few more of the bugs out of here. I'm trying to get you a little bit closer view of this too. I'll try to make a video someday how I made this cutting milling stand. There you go, there's an angle. You can see that it does leave some saw marks. They're not nearly as pronounced as they look. I'm, I'm holding it just right in the light to give you the very most pronounced cut marks I can, but it's really pretty flat. I mean, it shows. There's some, certainly some shadows coming across it. I don't believe that's in my saw because when I was cutting with the last blade, it, it gave a pretty glassy smooth finish, but the blades didn't last very long. And with this contraption I've got on here with the, the rolling tabletop and all the, the magnet attachments and vacuum attachments I've got on here, this saw really, uh, really is hard to break down. So I like to use this blade so far, it looks like it's going to get me quite a few more cuts than a standard steel blade would get. And I'm sure the finishes over time will be smoother on average. Just an example of what you don't want on an expensive piece of wood. This was cut on one of my old steel blades. And this was going to be a fairly expensive piece of wood cut down into blanks. But you automatically lose about an inch of it right there to the blade drifting off. I don't know what I hit, but uh, certainly hit something. That messed up my day a little bit. And when you're cutting a piece of dogwood like this, it's even that much worse because this stuff is, is pretty hard wood to come by. And as you can see, it's got quite a few cracks in it already. That's just typical of dogwood. As it dries, just about no matter what you do, you're going to have a hell of a hard time trying to get this wood to dry without cracking. This was already cracked when I got it, so I haven't had a chance to try to prevent any cracking. I'm just trying to cut it up into blanks right now to counter as many of those future cracks as I can. Here's a little bit smaller piece of dogwood, and I was able to keep this one from cracking. I don't recall if I got this one green or if it had just died, but it, it wasn't dead long by the time I got my hands on it. And I have yet to see any cracks form. A lot of times they'll form in the side of the, the, side of the log, kind of look like a, a Miss Pac-Man. As embarrassing as this shop is, I'm gonna show you a, kind of what happens to these things when they try to dry. There's a piece of dogwood and it's just now started splitting in the last couple of days. I've taped the end, I've waxed the end, I've done about everything I can to this one to keep it from cracking, and there's probably not any hope at all that this one's not gonna crack. So I'll make a couple more passes over here, and then tell you kind of what I like and what I don't like about this blade. I think I'm actually going to cut a bigger piece than that. Oh, this stuff is heavy. This stuff is heavy. That is getting dangerously close to my camera, being able to make it through this. Get the saw adjusted here, locked in. 
I think maybe we'll make a pass and just take a little bit off of this one. I am going to turn my dust collection on. I try to save as much of this dogwood dust as I can, use it for other projects. Makes for really good filler wood if you're trying to fill in cracks with glue and glue and sawdust. I will say these boards aren't even trying to bind a little bit and I'm not supporting them other than just kind of holding them in place. I have to move the camera out of the way. Well, the one thing I'm dreading is when this thing catches a piece of this wood and rips the board over on its side and destroys the blade. That is going to be a, a sad day for me. See if I can get you kind of close up on this one. Well, I don't like that. Had my top roller guide just a hair too low on that one. Evicted some ants. Go ahead and get her shut down here. have it got the uh, see if I can focus here for you get my gloves off this is the Laguna carbide tipped resaw King they've got pretty good sized carbide tips on them so I'm uh, I'm pleased with it. I kind of wish I'd bought one of these quite a long time ago it looks like it's gonna hold up well for me Ooh, there goes my camera stand I get you a focus here. I believe this one is the two and a half to three tooth per inch blade. And I'm pretty happy with it. I think I could probably get a smoother finish on this if it mattered enough for me to go a little bit slower. But there she is. give you a little bit of a sneak peek at the stand. So I've got one standard, oop, there goes the camera again, went down too low. Here we go. One standard large shop vac hose coming in, splits off at a Y. I've got one right here by the bottom wheel, the bottom, uh, wheel on the bandsaw it catches the sawdust as it comes through the tabletop and that was the original port on this and then i added this other side of the y that comes around right in line with the front of the blade and actually the front of the blade cuts in to this shop back hose see if i can get you a better view of that you can kind of see the blade off there in the back maybe Anyway, the end of my shop vac hose just rides right up against the saw blade. And between the two of these, they catch 
oh, I'd say at least 95% of the sawdust in this machine gets caught immediately by this, this top suction and then the one right below it and goes off to my cyclone separator and I haven't had to change a filter on that um, shop vac in probably two years using my cyclone separators. I'll go ahead and link that for you too. Anyway, that's my review. I'd say I like this. Um, it's not quite as smooth a cut as I expected it to be just from some of the hype I've heard out there. But that being said, I was pushing these boards through pretty quickly. This is a very hard wood and I do have this blade a fair bit under tensioned. I don't, I don't like to overstress these blades cause I don't want to, I don't want to snap a, snap a blade. I don't want to snap a $10 blade, much less one of these blades. So I've got the tension set a little bit low on it. I'm pushing these boards pretty fast on it. I'm sure my table has a few little bumps on it. It's just riding on angle iron and, uh, and ball bearings, but it, it does have some imperfection built into it, not on purpose, certainly. So that can explain away some of the, um, the roughness of the cut. But I think you could probably use um, use these joints as glue joints in a lot of cases if you needed to, and the glue is going to take up a lot of the a lot of the space. I'm not I'm not saying you should use glue to fill in gaps, but it probably would just as typical wood glue. Alrighty, thanks for watching. I'll try to get this thing uploaded for you, and uh, if there's anything else I can do for you, if you're looking for their tool reviews, we've got one heck of a collection of Dewalt tools and. Um, fair bit of Senko tools, quite a few Bostitch. If you'd like to see a review on something, certainly drop me a line or leave it in the comments below and we'll see what we can put out for you. And if there's any other blades that you all have seen, this, this so far has been about the most premium blade I've been able to find. But if you all know of another blade out there, I'd certainly be happy to try a different blade out and see how it works for us. Thanks again for watching. If this has been at all helpful to you, please like and subscribe. Every little, every little like, subscribe, and comment, it does help us get these videos out to more people. So we'd, uh, we'd love to hear from you. And let us know if there's anything else you'd like to see.